everybody it's Carol with Refunction Crafts and I know it's been a little while since I've done a video um, and I'm sorry about that um, as a lot of you know um, I've been taking care of my mom and as of a couple of weeks ago my mom did pass away from complications due to Alzheimer's um, she was 94 years old, so she lived a good long life, and I'm finally getting over the fact that she's not here anymore. I, well, I'm not over the fact. I still uh, check her room often and um, think about her several times a day, um, and hopefully I can get through this without without a tear. Um, there's a little bit coming on here, but anyway... Um, so what I did was I did a um, an altered alarm clock that is um, in memory of my mom. And um, I also did another one that I had put into my store that I'm not going to be able to show you today because as soon as I listed it, I sold it um, the same night. So unfortunately, I don't have that one to show you, but I do have the one that I just completed yesterday for my mother um, that I can show you. Um, it's one of these little, <laughs> and I've already taken this one apart, the alarm clocks with the little bells on the back or on the top that, you know, you, you set it and it rings on those little bells. Um, I have to turn that one around because you can't really see the bells from the front. Um, but this is the one that I did for my mom. And um, the, as you can see, there's a beautiful picture of my mother in there. That was her at 18 years old, um, an absolutely gorgeous woman. And um, I added, let's see, I added an angel and all these beautiful flowers and bling and a little um, dangly butterfly here with a, a little dangle ball on it. And then all of this bling here. And then at the top, it says, time spent with you. And it's on just a strip of, of paper that I printed that on. My friend um, Carmen gave me the idea to... <coughs> Car <coughs> well, I won't say her last name. I was going to say her last name, but I won't. Um, just in case she wouldn't want me to do that. Uh, but my friend Carmen, um, who belongs to a group with me called Happy Birds Glitter Nest... Um, gave me the idea of this saying here um, and so I went ahead and used it and I absolutely love the way this turned out. So this is uh, this piece here is in memory of my mom so this is one that I will absolutely be keeping myself um, and it's going on my fireplace mantle so I just wanted to show you all how pretty it turned out and that's what we're going to be making today the one that we're making today will not be a mem memorial piece. Um, this one will be a piece that I'll be putting in my Etsy shop. But um, I just, I had a lot of requests from people asking how I made it. So we're going to do that today. First thing first, um, what we're going to do is you have to, to take this whole thing apart. So there's, there's lots of screws and things that have to come out, bits and pieces that come out of the inside let me show you what I took out of the inside. I gotta pull it out of the trash. Um, just so that you all know, there's no cool parts in any of this stuff that I pulled out and threw away. These are all just plastic pieces and a battery pack, and that's about it. There's no cool time pieces or you know the the clock innards that you get out of a nice old clock. So there's none of that in there. So I've taken it all apart. Here I've also got the, um, the the hands to the clock. I won't be using those today, but I just wanted to show you that they come out um, nicely, and these you can use for another project, or you can use it in your clock project if you want to. Um, but I'm going to put those aside because we're not going to use those today. And then uh, some of these other little bits and pieces. We won't be using these screws again, so we don't need those. <clears throat> I'm going to put those aside, trying to get everything out of the way. And then this was the front piece that has 
the piece of glass in it. Um, and I guess it went, I don't know which way it went. Anyway, this had the piece of glass in it and went in the front. We're not going to be using these pieces either. So we're going to set those aside. Um, and I guess that's it. So what we're going to do first, the first thing that you want to do once you get this all apart and you get all of it, make sure you're careful because there's going to be these little nuts and washers and things that are going to be on the inside that are holding this these pieces, which are the feet. And you can see those on this one. You can see the feet at the bottom. So you're going to want to save those pieces. And these nuts are going to hold those in, and the nuts are going to hold these in with these um, with these pieces that that hold that all together. But I'll show you how we put this back together um, when that time comes. And then these are the little washers too. So these pieces we will be reusing. So don't throw those away and don't don't put them somewhere where you won't be able to find them because you will need them. Otherwise, you won't get these other pieces back in. They won't stay. So, okay, so, and then this is the handle that goes on the top. So for now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put these aside, because these are all gonna get painted as well, but the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna take a, a piece of, um, I don't know what grit this sandpaper is, but something that's fairly rough, and you want to go around this entire piece, and you want to rough it up, and I have already done that on this one, um, but I just wanted to show you, you know, just enough to rough it up, and this will help the paint to stick, because we're going to be painting this white today, and then the next thing that you want to do is just to take some rubbing alcohol, and put some on a a paper towel, whoopsie, I almost dropped that whole thing, and then wipe this down so that it's good and clean and not dusty. Otherwise your paint won't stick because it'll be too dusty. So I'm gonna wipe it all down. I've already, like I said, I have already um, sanded the entire thing. And we're gonna, I've already sanded these pieces you can see how rough that is after I sand it. And we're going to clean that. And all of these little pieces as well. Okay. So, now we have sanded this, these, and we have... Um, made them all rough and cleaned them up so we don't need the sandpaper anymore so I'm going to put that aside and uh, what you're going to need when you paint this what I'm doing is I'm going to be painting it with white chalk paint um, the brand that I have is called Art Minds I like the way this paint um, sticks to my projects and I like the the finish that I get from it so um, I think I got this at, I want to say Hobby Lobby, either Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's, one of those two. I'm not positive though, so um, you may have to look around, but I'm pretty sure I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I think I got it one day when um, my husband and I were out running around um, doing a little shopping. This was when my mom was still with us and my sister was here. Uh, helping out helping out with my mom and so we kind of got an afternoon to get out and do a couple of things but um, anyway so so we've done that part so now we're gonna I'm just gonna shake up this paint a little bit we're gonna open this paint and it's quite thick um, if you guys can see this, it's really, really thick paint, but I'm just going to use what's in the lid on this. I'm going to set this aside so that I don't have too many things. And I'm going to start painting this, but I'm not going to paint the whole thing on camera because I think it would just drive you guys nuts and it would take too much time out of the video. So, um, I'm just going to show you how I do it. I'm using a sponge paintbrush and I'm just going to dab it. And I've got a lot of paint on there, so I'm going to be spreading this paint around as I go. 
but this is the best way to get the best coverage um, and even with doing this I'm sorry if I was shaking the camera you guys I was had my arm on the table um, even with doing it this way you'll probably want to put two coats of paint on this um, just to cover it up and um, shoot I'm sorry you guys hold on just a minute I have a call coming in um, and I'm gonna have to take that but I'm gonna go around this entire thing and um, when I get done with this I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like finished I will put um, two coats of paint on everything here and um, then we will go on to the next step so I'll see you in just a flash okay so here we go we've got it all painted we have the pieces these pieces painted and the base these pieces here I'm actually going to paint those after I get them on the um, the base and the reason that I'm going to do that is because they're they're so little and they're hard to um, actually if I'd been thinking about it I had a piece of foam that I could have set them on uh oh that I could have set them on to dry. I didn't even think about that. But um, it, they're actually easier to paint if they're on the, the base. And so I'm gonna wait and just do it that way. Um, and we'll be good to go. This paint, I can get to dry very quickly. So once I put those on, I'll paint them very quickly and then I will um, uh, dry them with my blow dryer and then we'll be set. And the other thing that I did was I took a piece of this um, paper and um, turned it into the backing. So I've got the backing in there and all I did was take this base, put it on top of the paper and um, took my pencil, if I can find it, took my pencil and drew around the base and then cut it out and um, what I did was I glued it on the back with some E6000 so I just ran a bead if say this is the circle this is for a different uh, thing that I'm working on if this is the circle I would take my E6000 and go around the entire edge set my base on top of it and then press it down really well make sure that you've got like in this case I've got lines in this paper so I want to make sure that my lines line up up and down um, so I did that and um, then you would want to press it down and then put something heavy and for me what I did was I have this this little Tupperware container full of bling that um, I just sat on top of it and let it dry for a few minutes um, and then I pulled it off and now I do have I when I draw the circle I draw it slightly larger than the base of this and there there is an edge hanging over I'll just take my my handy dandy scissors and I'll go around and cut that off um, but I think it's better to have it a little bit larger so that you have something to work with when you're trying to uh, put the base on it and you're sure to not overcut in the from the get-go and then have edges that are not attached um, that's way worse than having to cut this off um, on the back end so that's what I'm doing I'm just cutting off this edge these scissors I love these scissors and these are actually for sewing <laughs> Um, they they work great if you do. Um, I bought these because I make um, rag quilts, and so these are the best kind of scissors to use. Um, actually, these are not the best. There's another style that I like even better than these for clipping my rag quilts. But the ones that clip in this way instead of you know the the scissors that you're you know your basic everyday scissors um, it just is these work really well for this sort of thing because I can get right up on the edge 
and cut these um, little extra pieces of paper off. And this is just the paper that I used on this one is from some that I bought at um, Michael's not that long ago. They were having a sale on some of their paper. Now I've got some edges here where you can see a little bit of the paint has kind of come off where I was using the scissors. That's okay. Well, that's all stuff we can touch up on the back end. We don't have to worry about little, little things like that can just be touched up on the back end when you're done with the whole piece you go back behind everything and you you fix that sort of stuff so um, don't worry about having a few little bits where you know you may have scratched it or what have you and no matter how much sanding you do on something like this you can still scratch that paint um, to me it's not a big deal and sometimes it just adds to the rusticness of the piece. So <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's not a problem. I like rustic and I like shabby chic and, and all of that. So that works fine for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these pieces back on. These are the feet, these little uh, pointy pieces. And then I'm going to take two of these little, two of these little, well here, here's a foot and we're gonna use a nut and a washer. So those are the pieces that are gonna go into this now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the washer on here. We're gonna put that through there and we're gonna screw it into that nut until it's tight. And you may have to take your um, a pair of your uh, needle nose pliers and hold on to that nut and do your final screwing so that that foot fits in there nice and tight. So now we're going to do the next one, and we're going to put it in the hole that is provided by our handy dandy clock piece. We're going to screw that in, and I'm going to get it semi tight, and then I'll use my needle nose pliers and hold on to that nut and just get that last turn in. So, there, now we have the feet on. Okay, so Next, what we're going to do, and this bell thing, what I did was when you take this piece out, it, it, let me see if you can see it. When you take this piece here out, it, it was screwed into another piece. So what I've had to do is I've had to glue it with E6000 up underneath. I had to kind of bend it and glue it up under there. I did not do that on camera because the time consuming part of it, letting that E6000 dry and so forth, um, I didn't want to waste that time. So I'm sorry if um, you guys didn't get to see that part of it, but it's not that big a deal. You'll be able to figure it out once you get yours apart and you can either use that or not. Now on the other two clocks that I did, I didn't even use that piece, I left it off. So um, that's not a problem either. So. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, we've got this, 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 and this. And these are the parts for the top pieces. Okay, so this little piece here actually has um, threading on both ends of it. So one end is going to um, be threaded and go, let's see. One end is going to go through this. I'm trying to think. I think I want to screw it into this first. So we're going to put that in here. I'm going to put the nut on and screw that into that nut if I can get it on there straight. Put the washer on the wrong end there. So 
Sorry, guys. Oh, my goodness. Now you want to give me trouble. Oh, boy. There we go. Okay, now we're... Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, I'm going to use my needle nose pliers. I'm going to go in there and grab that nut and I'm going to continue screwing that until it's tight. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to take this and put it in this other hole here. Take our nut and get that started. And then we'll take our needle nose pliers and finish screwing that on. So now we've got our ears for these bells. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this washer on the top. We're going to put this bell up here and we're going to screw on this little top piece. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Let me get it that way. We've got our washer, we've got our bell, and we've got our little rounded top. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, this is what it looks like now is really quick. I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to paint these little pieces and I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, now comes the big to do the good part. And this one is going to be different than the other two that I've made. Now the other two, um, what I'll do is when I'm done with this video, I will post pictures of the other ones that I did so you guys can see both of them. Um, one of them being the one that I've already showed you at the beginning of this video, uh, which was a memorial to my mom. But this one is going to be even different and you're not going to believe what I'm going to do. So this one, we're actually going to be adding lights to. And the lights that I'm going to be using are these. Um, it's, it's a string of lights and it's battery operated. It uses a button battery. Um, easy, easy to replace. It's got the place where you can unscrew this and replace the batteries. And um, I buy these bat these um, light strings on Amazon. And here is the box that they come in. And it comes with, I want to say there's like six strings of lights in each box. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I've used two of these and there's six, yeah, six string lights in each package. Plus they send you one screwdriver and and I'll show you that too so that you can change the the button batteries in these. So it comes with that one screwdriver which you know, if you want to send that to one of your customers, if you sell them, that's great. Or to give it as a gift, um, you know, if you're using these lights in something that you're making as a gift, you, one person can get a screwdriver. Um, or you can keep them for yourself because they come in really handy dandy for things that you might be doing. So that is the box that these come in. I buy them on Amazon. And I will give you guys the link to... Um, uh, Amazon that I use to purchase those string lights. These are wonderful and I think they have a life of about these little lights have a life oh, let me turn them on for you so you can kind of see there they are lit up They're, they have a blue cast not a yellow cast um, but they have a long life um, it'll work for 48 hours total at a time but these little lights here will last up to I think it's like 5,000 hours it's crazy um, 
I know I read that somewhere. I would have to I would have to look around. But I think these little lights, just by changing the batteries and so forth, these little lights will last a very, very long time. So um, it's not like it's something that you know you would have to change out on a regular basis. These are gonna work for a long time and it's and you know this isn't the kind of thing that you're gonna keep all lit up all the time. Um, you know, when you've got people coming over and you want them to see your beautiful stuff. Um, you're going to keep it lit. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm also going to be using this this piece of um, well, it looks like moss. It's not real moss. It's made out of a kind of a nylon-y material. But I buy this in a roll. I got this, I believe, at Hobby Lobby when I was there the last time I was there or a couple times ago. Um, but anyway, it's really cool to use in something like this because you just cut off the piece that you want to use um, and you roll it up in there. But what we're going to be doing, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this string of lights and this part back here is going to actually hook up to the back of the, the clock. And so the rest of this is going to go to the inside. So what I'm going to start doing, since I have this little hole at the top for this little bell ringer, I'm going to start feeding this, these lights, through the top of this and get them on the inside of the clock. So this may take a minute. Let me just get these in here. And maybe it'll help if you guys see with the lights on. There. I'm just pulling each section through here. Okay, here we go. I want to make sure I'm pulling them the right way. Um, I want to get all of the lights on the inside of this clock. And then there's going to be a little extra wire out here and then we're going to push that out to the back. Making sure that the screws are showing to the outside of this because when you want to change your batteries you want to make sure that you can open this this piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my E6000 and I'm going to put a little bit on this. Oh boy, I didn't mean to do that, but it popped around anyway. And then I'm going to put a tiny bit of hot glue on there. And I'm going to press that onto the back of that clock. Don't press too hard because this paper is, it's cardstock, but it's not, um, it's not super sturdy, so you don't want to press through the paper that you're using for your backing. And right now I'm just kind of taking some of this glue off of the back that's kind of oozed out of here just to kind of make it look a little bit neater because I will be selling this in my Etsy shop and I don't want it to look bad. So, there we go. Good enough. Okay, so now you can see I've got this wire coming out from the top. And we'll be able to, to this will not really be noticeable because we're going to be putting things up around the front of this clock. So the next thing that we're going to do is I want these lights to go under this um, this moss. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of taking them and randomly going around the back side. Oh, and I'm going around the wrong side. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> now we've got it. Okay. Now we're going to randomly just kind of place them so that the lights are kind of all, all over the place. We don't want them all 
kind of popping up in the same spots. Um, so we're just kind of placing them around. On the back side of this moss. And we're almost done. And there we go. Okay, so I've got this these lights in behind this moss. And I'm going to be gluing this moss to the inside of this clock. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my first edge here and I am just using hot glue to do this guys okay I'm going to start this edge wherever it lands okay I want to keep the lights on the inside of the clock Okay, now I'll be able to take the rest of it and do it a little bit easier because we've got it started. And we just want to make sure that we're keeping the lights, you know, so that they're so that they're on the inside. And we're just pressing this moss up against the edge. And we've got a little Sorry about the dogs, guys. We've got a little lip that's coming up over this that we're going to be kind of forming over the outside of this clock. So this, um, this moss is just a little bit, probably, I'm going to say a half of an inch bigger than the clock width. So it works out perfectly for this because I definitely want that lip hanging over that I can use um, as a decorative as a decorative piece. You guys, are, oh my gosh, and <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but I just actually thought about using these lights today. Um, actually, as I was doing this, when I was painting, um, <laughs> is when I decided I was going to use the lights um, because I turned around and looked at the moss and I saw this my little string of lights sitting there and realized that they would look really cool in this <laughs> so that's when I decided okay now I'm going to turn these lights off for now I'm going to pull this edge over and I'm going to slowly kind of go around and glue this edge down over the outside of the clock. And again, guys, this is just for decorative effect. And this didn't go, as you can see right here, it didn't go all the way around. But that's okay because we're going to be filling um, that piece in with stuff so it's it's not going to be a problem um and if i need to cut out a little extra piece that's i've got it right here so i just cut out another piece if i decide i'm not going to put anything in that spot um and we will fill that in not a problem Be selective when you're doing this. I was not as selective as I could have been because I probably would have left that opening at the bottom. Um, and I didn't. So it's kind of at the side of the clock, which is fine. Um, but if you're if you're trying to, you know, make sure that it's lit all the way around on the, the outer, upper, and side edges, then you'll want to make sure that you um, have that opening at the bottom again not a problem for me I'm not worried about that because I can I can adjust 
as I go. So I am going to cut another little piece of this out so that I can put it along that edge there right here and cover that up. Right there. And we'll just press it around to the inside. And voila! So far, we're looking pretty cool. I'm really liking this. Okay, now, put that over there, get it out of my way. Um, the only thing that I did not do, and I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna actually use an image in this one um, today. I think I'm just going to decorate it up and use um, my some of my bits and pieces and my flowers. Um, and I think I'm going to use a bird and I have a bird here oh goodness what did I do with her oh here she is yes it is a she um, you know how most people say in most species the male bird is always the pretty one well I've decided that she's a female bird and she's the pretty one um, so she's just a little bird that actually I picked up uh, probably about three years ago at the Dollar Tree um, and she's got these pretty little pieces in the tail. I will be using her in this and lots of bling and lots of pretty flowers. I have all of these little uh, paper roses and other flowers that I'm going to be throwing into the mix um, to try and give it an interesting and unique look. And then I also have this, which I'm thinking... may look kind of cool going around the edge yeah I think I'm going to be using this as well and this I got from Kiki Sale um, I will also be providing you a link Kiki Sale is on Facebook and it's a site that a very good friend of mine um, Debbie Cottrell runs and she sells really pretty laces and bling and things like that. So a lot of the bling that I use in my pieces comes from Kiki's Sale. And um, actually most of my bling these days comes from there. And uh, so if you're interested in, in picking some of that up, just visit um, her site and join the group. And she does a sale almost at least every other Saturday night, um, sometimes every Saturday. So it just kind of depends on the week and what she's got going on. So anyway, um, so this is what we have so far, you guys. It looks really, really cool. And then if I turn the light on, you can see there's lights going around the entire thing. So next, what we're gonna do is we're going to decide uh, what we're going to put on the inside of this. And I think what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to, we will definitely be using a lot of these roses. Um, and I'm almost out of roses, you guys. This is it. This is it for my pretty paper roses and stuff. I thought I had more. And I guess I've used them all up, so I'm really, really sad um, because I'm going to run out after this clock. So, And I have another clock that I'm getting ready to do. Um, I'll show you real quick. This is a mantle clock, and, I, oops, and this is going to be my next project. I've already got it started. I've got my paper on the back. And I've got it started, but that's going to be the next thing that I'm going to be doing. And now I have no more flowers, <laughs> so that's okay. I'll uh, I'll either buy some from Debbie or I'll go out and pick up some more paper roses and and get started on that one. Um, so anyway, okay, let's go ahead and get started putting these on the inside. I think honestly, first thing what first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this and put this piece on the outside. 
and we're going to cut that right about there. And I'm going to start gluing that on with, I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue, you guys. Um, just so that you know, when I use hot glue, it's always Gorilla Glue because I think it, it seems to stick better and it's easier to work with um, for me. I don't use regular hot glue anymore. I wouldn't even know what brand to buy, to be honest. I always, always use Gorilla Glue. And I buy mine on Amazon as well. Um, and I can, I can leave a link um, in the drop-down menu below um, for you guys so that you can see how to get the Gorilla Glue that I order now just so that you know I use a mini glue gun for some reason I I prefer it over using one of the big fat glue guns it just I have many hands so for me the mini glue gun just is easier to handle and so that's what I I choose to use um, Okay, we're almost done. Almost got that around. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'm going to start with these roses. And I'm trying to work as quickly as I possibly can, you guys. I'm so sorry if this takes longer than than we want it to, but um, I, I am trying to work as quick as I can. I knew this was a long project going in, so that's where I'm going to place that first rose. And again, there's the feet, so you can kind of see where that's gonna sit. And then, let's see. I'm going to put this lighter pink rose towards the back at the bottom and it's likely that it's going to get more covered up than any of the other ones but that's okay. Um, that just always happens so uh, let's see. take this one and we're going to put it more towards the front and I'm putting a healthy dose of hot glue on these roses as I'm laying them down and every now and then I'm going to turn the light on and see how that's looking it looks really cool um, and then I think I'm going to put one of these raggedy roses. This was on something else that I pulled it off of. Uh, but it's okay. It's still usable. <laughs> I don't throw anything away that I know I can use on another project. If I take it off of one thing, it's going to go on another at some point. So, Okay, and then we have... Actually, I, I think I want to put this little... I'm going to put that little purple rose, uh, flower on there somewhere, but... I think I'm gonna I'm trying to decide if I want to put the bird on the top of the clock or let's see let's try the inside on the inside I think it needs to go on the inside honestly Okay, so what we've got to do is put some glue on our little bird's belly. A really healthy amount of glue. And we got to hope that I hit the right spot. So I have to turn this in my direction, you guys, putting this in here. Okay, 
and I'm pressing the bird down into the roses. There we go. Oh, that looks really pretty. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. Super pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to take I'm going to take this little purple flower. I like to add a splash of another color in when I'm doing these kinds of things. I don't always go with all the same colors. And then I have these little tiny flowers that I like to use in, in some of my stuff that I will have kind of coming out of some of these other areas. And we're just going to really quickly put a little bit of glue and press that in there. And I'm just going to lay this down, you guys, so that maybe we can both see what we're doing. And this one, we're going to put kind of going across the same side, just, just near the other one. There we go. Get our little glue strings out of there. <laughs> ah! Everything's sticking to me. Okay, um, and I'll go out at the end and clean up all the any glue strings that are left sitting around in this poor little guy. Okay, and we're gonna put one over on this other side. And we'll have this sort of Coming out the bottom, like that. And we need another one. And again, we're going to put a little bit of hot glue there. And this one's going to come towards the front here so that it sort of hangs over. Okay, boy, that glue is just stringy, stringy, stringy. Okay, and then I like to use several of these kind of sporadically. Okay, and then this one, let's see, yeah, we'll put this one going behind the other two there, I just got a little hot glue on there, and we're going to tap it in back there, there we go, and I just laid that one in right there. Okay, now I need something to sort of go up above the bird. So, what do I want to put inside there? Let me get my bling case here. Okay. Let's see. Let me see what this looks like. Oh, that's too big. Although that would maybe go pretty on the outside of that. Um, okay, I think I think I'm going to use this piece just because it goes around the inside rather well and we're just going to kind of go up towards the top here with some E6000 
because when we're using when we're gluing anything that's metal or plastic or wood or has a smooth surface we're always going to use E6000 so that it stays better because your hot glue works good to to glue something down initially but it's not going to last forever whereas E6000 will last a very long time um, it's not going to come apart easily so so there we go we've got that piece at the top that looks really pretty and then I don't know we're not going to use these flowers I know that so we can put those away um, okay so this is my bling bucket <laughs> um, and I need to decide what I'm going to use now a lot of this bling also comes from Kiki sale just so that you guys know um, uh, Debbie sells the most beautiful stuff in her shop um, and I gotta tell you I mean I have I have a ton of it and I use everything she she sends me um, and I've got like like I said most of this is from her store this is mostly stuff that I have gotten from her store and um, I use a lot of bling in my projects so for me um, I can't get enough and so it works out really well and I love 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 her store I love everything she sells I am just thrilled um, to let you guys know about her shop because you will so enjoy going in there and going to her Saturday night sales and um, you have to get in there early because things do go rather quickly um, especially the popular items there's a lot of items that she sells on a regular basis um, that are extremely popular and they sell extremely quickly so you have to make sure that you know you get in there early um, okay so we're gonna try and get this thing done here so I, so I don't want to keep on you know talking too much and not working um, I only have a few more minutes here and I need to get this video done this is the hard thing about doing something a project like this that generally takes a little more time than some of my others and I know I have had a couple of people say that my videos are too long and for that I am I do apologize um, but unfortunately some of these things if you want good instructions instead of just a video where it's music and me you know doing a bunch of stuff that you're not quite sure what I'm doing or what I'm using um, to me you know sometimes I just need to to think about those people that really want the instruction rather than those that want a quick overview you know some crafters are more experienced than others and in that case yeah you don't need a whole lot of instruction but for those who do want more instruction and more information, I think it's fair to um, give them what you know they're tuning in for. So, and I think a lot of people that um, watch my channel watch it because I provide more detailed instructions. So, at least I hope so. Um, but we are going to try and get this done relatively quickly here trying to let that hot glue dry and then we'll put some other stuff around this and I have one more spot that I want to fill on the inside of this and I think I'm going to use this pretty blingy piece here And what I'm doing is using a little E6000, and then I'm going to put a couple of dots of hot glue, not really to glue it down, but to, to give it time for the E6000 to, um, to cure. So that hot glue sticks it down for now, 
and the E6000 sticks it down for good. <laughs> That's kind of the way I look at it. So I've put that other little piece in there behind the bird. And I think it looks very pretty. And everything else that's going on is going on to the outside of this piece. And we're not going to use that. Um, let's see. Sorry, you guys, I'm just trying to, I want to take this pearl off of here. I know it sounds, seems kind of not very nice, but I'm going to take this pearl off of here. I'm going to put some E6000 here, and I'm going to put some on this piece. And then I'm going to put a little dot of hot glue. And oops. And we're going to stick that down right there. Okay. So that's another piece. This just has a little dangle on it. And I like to put at least one piece that has a dangle coming off of it on these because I just think it looks really, really nice. To have that piece dangling down okay and then do we want this butterfly or do we want this butterfly I think we're going to use we're going to use this silver butterfly and again, putting some E6000 around where we know it's going to touch. Sorry, you guys. And I'm sorry if, I, if I'm getting off camera, and I just know I am. I'm so sorry, everybody. I just am terrible. And since I haven't been doing videos for a little while, I've kind of gotten off track. And I'm so sorry if you're not getting enough of this. Okay, and then do we need another piece on here? I don't know. Definitely don't need that one. Okay, let me just clip this off of here. I may or may not use this piece. I'm not sure. Oh, I know. How about this little feather piece? If we take that and kind of go behind here with it, or maybe... Oh, guys, I don't know. Do we even need it? I'm thinking not. Okay. Um, let me just stick this piece down really quick with the hot glue. I just didn't get it stuck down there well enough the first time. I need to leave it alone for a second and let it sink in.
Okay, you guys, that's what it looks like so far. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to put on the outside of this. Let's see. The lights you can see, they come on. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I will probably, well, the last thing, I'm, I am going to do one more thing, you guys, really quick. And I'm going to, hoping I can do this really, really quick. Um, I want to put some um, triple thick and some diamond dust on the inside around the flowers. I'm sorry, I'm just stepping around my desk here real quick. Um, okay, so here's the triple thick. This is something I almost always use when I use diamond dust, so I'm going to take a nice big glob of that and I'm going to put it around on these flowers here. so that I can drop the diamond dust in and give it that extra sparkle. And we're going to be putting diamond dust on all these little flowers that are around here. And this big rose on the inside. This will only take a minute. <laughs> I'm even going to put a little bit on that raggedy fabric flower. And then some on the bird. Because diamond dust, oh, it's my best friend. I just love diamond dust. And since it's, since it's going on the inside of this, I don't have to worry as much about it being stickery because diamond dust for those of you that don't know is actually um, broken glass it's um, also called German glass glitter and they what they do is they take and they break up a bunch of glass and turn it into glitter and so if you're not careful you can stick yourself with it and you can you can get a little finger cut or whatever it's not doesn't happen real easily but if you're not careful um, you definitely can cut yourself with it and so it's not something that you want to use around children um, I will say that for sure if you're going to use diamond dust or German glitter glass don't do those projects with kids and then here's my my glitter glass, this is um, from Flora Craft. I get this on Amazon as well. Sorry about that light, you guys. Um, I get this on Amazon and I will put a link um, for this uh, and the triple thick so that you know where to get it and um, you can get right to that link. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just sprinkling a little bit of diamond dust over all of these areas where I added triple thick so that we get that extra sparkle and what I'll do um, once this video is over I'll let this dry and then I will take video of this um, with the glitter because what happens is when you first put this triple thick on it has a tendency to look really milky. So it doesn't look as pretty as it will once the triple thick dries because you can see in certain places where it's it's a bit milky on the inside here. But hopefully you can catch some of that sparkle and you can see that it's all over on the inside of those little flowers and things on the inside of this piece. So anyways, that's it you guys. Um, I'm gonna turn off, let me see if I can turn off my lights and see if you can get a good view. Let me put this down. I wanna see if you can get a good view of what this is gonna look like. I don't know how, I can't get my room completely dark. 
but I'll get it as dark as I can to try and show you what it's going to look like with the lights on. So that's it. Isn't that gorgeous? So you can see it with the lights on. So that's got the lights glowing on the inside. How beautiful is this piece? I am super excited about this. I'm super excited that I decided to try using, <laughs> using the lights and I will definitely be doing more of these for sure. So that's, that's my little birdie clock. Hope you guys enjoyed this, um, this piece and, um, I hope you'll try it for yourself because it was really fun to do and um, really gorgeous and I just can't say enough about um, the fun that I've had. If you don't want to make your own and you're looking to um, get a really great gift for someone, this one will be available in my Etsy shop um, shortly. So I will be putting it there um, for per available for purchase and um, I will put a link to my Etsy shop down below. I've got this and lots of other really great items that I've been um, putting together lately. Um, and I'm getting, I'm really gearing up for the holidays because I know everybody's going to start doing their holiday shopping uh, pretty soon. And so um, how wonderful would this be as a gift for your mom or your grandmother or your sister or somebody that would really appreciate something this fine. Um, but uh, again, super fun to make. And if you want to make your own, I buy these little clocks at thrift stores. So just so that you guys know, you can buy these at thrift stores. They're, they run anywhere from four to five dollars a piece, um, but just super fun to work with. And I think you guys will have a great time playing with them. Um, again, I will put the, the link to Kiki's sale down at the bottom uh, in the description menu. Uh, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And um, hit the, um, the bell so that you can get notifications when I do new videos. I will be doing lots more videos now. Um, I think that's what my mom would want. But I just wanted to let you all know, too, that, you know, mom passed peacefully and um, you know, it, it's it's kind of bittersweet. She's not suffering any longer. She's in a better place. And um, <laughs> at the same time, I miss her terribly. Uh, so I really wish she was here. But everybody have a really blessed day. Um, I'll be back soon with another video. I'm gonna be doing a video on some uh, polymer clay stuff that I've been working on, so stay tuned for that. That should be coming up in the next few days, probably. So anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Have a wonderful, blessed day, and we'll be seeing you real soon. Bye-bye.